tank one too, however you call me, I don't really care. And um, I'm sorry if my voice sounds a bit strained, it's just because I have a very very bad allergy to everything regarding to spring, unfortunately. But I've been trying to work around that and I've been playing some World of Tanks in the recent few weeks. And I've been trying to get the Progetto M35 mod 46 I think. Um, and currently I am, <coughs> excuse me, currently I am sitting on stage A, I just gotten stage 7 finished, and I've been playing some tier 10s, and I picked this tank up way back when um, I actually grinded the object 263 line, and when the object 263 was a tier 10, I got this thing as a replacement, and I've been playing it, well, not that often, I have never really played this vehicle before this uh, event. I have I haven't really played tier 10 um, tier 10 tanks for a very long time. All the things I've heard about this tank are very very negative. Um, this is a vehicle that is supposed to be incre incredibly strong, and uh, I've played a few matches in it, and I can uh, pretty much confirm everything that the people are saying about this tank. This is one of the uh, most unbalanced tanks I've ever played. And at tier 10, that uh, pretty much says a lot, because there are a lot of tier 10 tanks that are unbalanced, but this is a whole new level of unbalanced tank. Now, what does tier 10 look like, <coughs> excuse me, tier 10 look like right now in World of Tanks? Well, we have new additions with a lot more armor, tanks that are added into the game with less weak spots, uh, with better armor, with incredibly good guns at the front, and thus making people pretty much having to lie on premium ammunition. So I think this trend has been starting way back when they started replacing all these um, these tanks, when they started replacing the British uh, heavy tanks, the British tank destroyers with the uh, Badger. I think um, that progress has come into play for a while now. And with this thing, with the object 268 version 4 and the object 430U, I think they have reached the pinnacle of um, absolute uh, stupidness in sense of adding tanks into the game with no real weak spots uh, on the front. And you can see that this tank, this is a tank destroyer with a 200, uh, with a 152 millimeter gun with uh, average DPM or I think uh, average alpha of 650. And this thing has frontal armor um, on the same basis as the Type 5 Heavy. Now the lower plate on this thing is no real weak spot. The weak spot on this thing is actually a tiny cupola on the left side, which this T-34 actually managed to penetrate, which is quite surprising because most of the time people do bounce off that thing. But you can see that this thing is very, very unbalanced at this point already. I'm not playing it as cautiously as I would be playing a tank destroyer most of the time. Uh, we're just going in, hammering these guys away, and with 293 millimeters of penetration and with a horrible um, accuracy, this thing is not meant to be a sniping vehicle. It does very good in close range combat because of very, very good gun handling statistics. Now we can see we just completely finished over this E100 and look at this, have you ever managed to flip an E4 with a tank? I just flipped an E4 with this tank, like what the hell is going on? We're pushing this guy around like he's, he's a, a toy <coughs> and this is just incredible with this tank, 2290 damage. Um, bounced, 3000 damage dealt, and now we can actually work on these guys from the rear. And people are asking themselves why are tier 10s not being played as often as maybe tier 9s or tier 8s? Well, I think the obvious answer is just, if you look at the tier 10s right now, you can see that with a tank like this, people really don't want to play tier 10s. Tier 10s have always been on balance, they have always been catastrophe for at least in my sense for balancing uh, sakes because it's pretty much the pinnacle of every nation um, they have the best tanks in there best armor best guns 
and it's just the superlatives of everything, you know? And what do you want to do against a Type 5 Heavy if you're in a, let's say, a IS-4 with only standard rounds? Obviously, you have to rely on those premium shots to be able to do anything against a, a Type 5 Heavy from the front, and then even you're going to have issues of penning that thing in the same spot. Now, the Object 268 version 4, on the other hand, if you kind of get attacked by this thing at the front, well, trying to, to penetrate this thing is going to be a lot more difficult, because the frontal armor is something along the lines of 250mm thick. The lower part is even thicker, I think. So the, the main weak spot that they could have given this tank has been completely reduced to an overextended piece of armor, making this thing absolutely overpowered. And I think people have talked about the state of this vehicle for a very long time now. Uh, Wargaming haven't announced, haven't announced any changes yet. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to change it. Probably we're going to see some kind of silent nerfs, but we're not sure because it's a Russian bias with these tanks. Um, especially with the new added tier 10 Soviet tanks. At least the Object 705A doesn't have the incredible strong side armor that this thing has on the front. And uh, I think it's definitely time to get some balancing in on tier 10. Because as it stands right now, this vehicle is definitely one of the strongest tanks in the game. Without really having to do anything, you can have a great game. You can bully any other vehicle that you're going to face, and yeah, I think it certainly needs to be fixed. So, I hope you guys did enjoy. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion on the Object 268 version 4. Have you encountered it on the battlefield? What do you think? Do you think I'm just over-exaggerating, or should this tank be nerfed to Oblivion? And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.